Acts, my brethren, let us uh, read from the book of Isaiah the prophet, chapter 61. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61. Isaiah the prophet, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the joy of the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen, plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall lead the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor, and instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Amen. When our Lord Jesus Christ was found during the time of his flesh in a synagogue of Nazareth, he opened the book, the Holy Scriptures, and he read this specific part writ, right, um, stating that it was prophetically written for that person, for him, for our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the man Christ Jesus, the incarnated Word of God. It is his testimony by the Holy Spirit. It is not only the testimony of Jesus Christ, but the revelation of the work and his mission. So by saying, by the Holy Spirit and the prophetic word, the word of God itself that will be incarnated into Christ Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. My Father has anointed me by giving me through the anointing, through the Holy Spirit, given me a mission and a work. You remember how the whole, He anointed him in the Holy Spirit on the day when he was baptized in the Jordan, when the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descended and stayed upon him and this was also the testimony and the sign of God the Father to John that upon whomever you see the Spirit descending and staying on him, he is the Son of God. He is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit and fire. <laughs> so prophetically, the Word of God testifies to this by saying, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord my God has anointed me by giving me a work and a mission. My work, first of all, is to preach good tidings to the poor who have no comforting word from any person. They have no hope. They are poor. And the poor have no present or future. To preach good tidings to the poor, that he may heal the brokenhearted, those who are desperate, those who are disappointed, that he may heal them. 
And what I want to point out straight from the beginning, my dear brethren, by the grace of Christ, is that this is done by Christ, but by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that which gives the ability to man Christ Jesus, that he may work in his mission, in his work. And let us never forget that the Lord assured us that just as I was sent by my Father, so also I send you to the world. So he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, those who are desperate, and to proclaim liberty to all the captives under the bondage of the devil, and to preach the opening of the prison to those who are bound. This is the work. But it doesn't end here. To proclaim the acceptable year, specific year, that will be welcome before God. That is the last year before the rapture of the church, where there, indeed, God will be glorified. And afterward, a day of vengeance of our God. With the second coming, Christ will descend with all his saints and his angels, so that he may bring vengeance upon those who do not know God and upon those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yet here his work does not end and his mission. He anointed me and he sent me that I may be able to comfort all those who mourn. Only Christ, by the Holy Spirit, can comfort all those who mourn. And afterward, after he comforts them, that he may place them in Zion and to begin new things in their life. New things, a new life. So, let us see this a bit more specifically. After he proclaims the acceptable year to the poor, he uh, preaches good tidings to the poor, he heals the brokenhearted, he proclaims liberty to the captives, he proclaims the, he, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, he proclaims a, a time of great blessing in the end, and the day of vengeance, he preaches the vengeance that God will bring upon those who do not know God and they who do not recognize God and do not obey the gospel of Jesus, then his work now extends to every person individually who is mourning, who is unfortunate, who is miserable. And after he comforts him, he places him in Zion, in the church. And when he places him in the church, there everything changes. There, instead of mourning, which needs comfort, he has mercy of joy and happiness. Instead of humility and reproach that he had on the outside, in the church he has beauty and grace of God. And instead of a spirit of heaviness, of, of carelessness, of, of despair, he has a garment of praise in the church. First he preaches, then he reveals, and then on a personal level he comforts and he saves. And he adds people into the church. And there he changes everything. Everything is made new. And they now, the ones to whom he preached, he revealed, he added into his church, the ones that he blessed now, and they are blessed out in the open toward all people. They are called trees, fruitful trees of righteousness, 
a planting of the Lord that he has planted for his glory. A fruitful tree that is planted by the channels of water, a planting of the Lord for his glory. And now what follows begins. The work of these specific people. This is where the work of Christ ends regarding himself. And now the work of the fruit of the labor of his soul begins. So they, the ones who will be a plant of the Lord, trees of righteousness for his glory, they will have their own work and their own mission to accomplish. They will re rebuild the old ruins. They will raise up the former desolations. They will repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. They have a work. And they will see the fruit of this, their fruit the trees that are planted by the channels of water, the plant of the Lord. Strangers, foreigners, aliens shall be added into the church and Christ will make them workers that they may feed the flocks and they may work as plowmen and vine dressers and the work of the church. And all together, it begins with one, with Christ. It extends with the sermon. It extends with the fruition. It goes even further with adding from all nations, strangers and foreigners. And all they together will be named priests of the Most High that is, intercessors, otherwise priests and kings of the Most High, priests of the Lord, servants of our God, they are, that, are, that they are flame of fire, they are fire of the Holy Spirit upon all of those who are none other than the Church of Christ, the body of Christ, where... Jesus Christ is the head and will always be the head and all the power and all the work is done by the Holy Spirit. And the great reward. Great reward. Instead of shame that you had out in the world, inside you will have double blessing, double portion of the Holy Spirit. Instead of confusion that you had and out inside, you will, you will possess joy, blessing, peace. And in their land, and the land of blessing, which is the Church of Christ, there will be everlasting joy, everlasting happiness, eternal glory. So this is the work that God has determined to that in humanity, this may be formed in humanity through Christ, through the anointed of the Lord by the Holy Spirit. But I return. Christ said, as the Father sent me, I also send you. Every one of us When God, by Jesus Christ, makes him an anointed, and he anoints him in the Holy Spirit, then he has the same mission and the same work. The exact same mission and the exact same work. To preach, to poor, to those who are in prison, to those who are captives, to those who are brokenhearted, to comfort them with a comfort that he has received already. 
that he may bring them and lead them into the church. Every one of us, a servant, manservant, and maidservant. As it is written that, furthermore, upon my men servant and maid servants, I shall pour of my Holy Spirit, so that they may prophesy the heavenly words. And they will be glad and they will rejoice with the work that Christ will do in them, that every anointed of the Lord leads to the church, as he will see things changing. Everything in the lives of men will change. The curse being transferred into blessing, bad into good, misfortune into happiness, the law into grace, the earthly things into heavenly things. The message, in other words, my dear brethren, is you mustn't forget you have a work and a mission and our work and our mission is to bring good tidings to the poor is to preach liberty to those who are captives the opening of bondage of those who are in prison healing to the broken hearted and especially that we comfort those who are mourning all around us so that we may lead them with the comfort that we have been comforted into the church of God and there that he may take charge of their life who is the Lord he is the teacher he is the professor the guide sorry our mission is to bring and the mission of Christ is to bless our mission is to protect the doors so that people don't leave and the mission of Christ is to preserve and the end when we realize our mission it is very important my dear brethren to be conscious Christians that we may be able to say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for this reason. The Lord has anointed me to preach. To preach the opening of, bond, of prison. He didn't say to free, but to preach. Good tidings to the poor. The opening of prison to those who are bound. Healing to the brokenhearted. At the same time, an acceptable year of the Lord. And finally, the day of vengeance of our God. This is our message, and our message, message is given basically with our presence, with our life. And less with our words. And afterward, the ability that God will give us to comfort because special ability is needed that you may be able to comfort man usually is burdened and he burdens others he mocks he reproaches he is sarcastic and he despises but this isn't a servant of God he has nothing to do with Christ he may be coming, he may be present, but he has nothing to do with Christ. The servant of God only comforts, supports, and strengthens. Only comforts, supports, and strengthens. And when he walks in this mind frame, then Christ is glorified, then Christ works, and the results, my beloved brethren, are apparent. They are not hidden, they are open. They are open in his life, in his family, in his work, in his surroundings, in the church where he serves. 
they are open the works of God. Glory be to God. And they are open because Christ makes them apparent. And he wants to reveal these things. Because he loves people. And because he wants to save all people, how will he save them? He sent Christ. He died for our sins. His work is done. Now it is our work. Now it is the work that is yours. It is your work now. The Father works. He draws. Christ works. He blesses. But who? Who does He draw and who does He bless? The ones to whom the Lord sends you. To the people who are next to you. The ones that He brings next to you. If only, my dear brethren, we can walk worthily of our calling. He did not invite us so we can sit around. He invited us so we can work. And indeed, the reward that He promises us here and there is according to the labor of each one and every one. Not how good He says things or what nice things He does, but how much does He labor. Not in His personal work, but in the work of his Lord, that he's trusted him. You have a mission. You have a work. He did not bring you here so you can sit. He brought you here so you can work for him. He did not call you so you can stay. He called you so he can send you. He did not call you so you can quiet down. He called you so you can run for him. And this applies to all the men servants and maid servants of God. If you do not have this spirit and this mind in you, you are simply not a servant of God. But God is striving with His Word, with His works, with the trials even, with the temptations that He permits to transform us into a plantation of the Lord for the glory of God. Who? You. Me. Your family, my family. And He may change us and transform us into a plantation of the Lord for His glory. And then, and only then, will you be ridden from the old desolations of your life, the old ruins. Only then you'll, will you be freed by the rumble that is in your life, the destruction, the wilderness, the desolations, the ruined cities from generation to generation. You cannot be rid of these things. You are not healed from these things unless you pray so that God may make you his manservant or maidservant. If you do not ask from God to transform your life, that you are not a petty Christian who comes and goes, but that you are, in the power of the Holy Spirit, a servant of God, manservant and maidservant of God. Not of the sweet water Christian, of the shallow end, but in the depths of God. And in the depths of God, only God will take you by His Holy Spirit. So be filled in the Holy Spirit. Glorify God. And let us seek, my dear brethren, for God to reveal to us. Let us ask from God to reveal His work. For that God may reveal what He wants from us. Because usually we, we care about, we say, what do we want from Him? Today let us change our mindset. Let us change our spirit. It's not what I want from God. It is, Lord, 
What do you want from me? This is a different Christian. This is a different walk. This is a different life. A different presence of God in this man's life. It is not, what will you do for me, Lord? But what will I do for you, Lord? It's not, Lord, help me in my road, but Lord, lead me into your road. Amen.